Hello and welcome to Dr. Joe's Health and Sanity Calls. I've got an exciting guest for you today, but I wanted to, um, first of all, tell you a little bit about why we are getting together on these calls. It's about keeping you healthy, sane, and productive during these trying times. And I want to thank you because I think you're helping me stay healthy, sane, and productive more <laughs> so than I'm helping you. Ah, these are been difficult times. One of the most common questions I've been getting from people about these calls is, uh, can we talk about food? Can we talk about food? <laughs> I, I get it. The kids are home, the cafeteria is closed. Now you're being asked to cook more than ever before and people go to the grocery stores to find what they want to get and maybe it's out. They don't know what else to use instead. So if dinner wasn't difficult before, it's getting a little bit more stressful now, and I get it. I get it. See, I'm a registered dietitian, as is my guest, but even though two degrees are in nutrition, I'm really fascinated with the whole study of the human body and how food interacts more from an intellectual uh, perspective. I love speaking to audiences about this, but when it comes to like planning meals and <laughs> recipes and I even go to the grocery store. I hate it all. So I've got somebody on the call today, Alice Henneman. She's been an extension educator at the University of Nebraska Lincoln for 36 years. She's now retired, but you wouldn't know it <laughs> because she is so involved spreading information everywhere on social media. And she's here to answer any of your questions about food, like what to prepare, what should I have in my pantry so it's shelf stable, what about food safety? She knows everything, literally everything. You're not going to be able to throw this woman off. So, um, it's kind of like one of the first questions I have is, we're not supposed to go to the grocery store that often, and yet my fresh veggies are not going to last two weeks, you know? So how do I deal with that? If I can't have fresh veggies, I love my fresh veggies. <laughs> so anyway, here we go. Alice, tell us what okay. you've been thank, doing recently. Th thank you, Joe. And you know, first of all, I think we all need to really say a big thank you to Joe for hosting these. She's just volunteering doing this and to put on, I've been behind the scenes with her getting ready on this. The work that she goes through getting this going as a volunteer Monday through Friday for several months now is amazing. And, you know, also, I think as before we talk about food, we really need to give a big thank you to all those folks in the grocery stores that are helping make, put the food on the shelf, check it out, etc. They are not home like Joe and I are in our home offices. They are out there on the front lines serving you. Now, I have... If I'm bouncing around a lot here, I'm sitting on a ball. It's one of the ways I exercise. <laughs> in fact, when I used to work, you know, if I kind of thought somebody to my office too long, I'd start going like this. <laughs> but anyway, I'll settle down, I promise. And uh, with this, I have several things from my pantry here. And Joe and I are talking about shelf-stable foods just because they – they keep around for a while. You don't have to worry about them getting too old for you for a long time. You don't have to keep, uh, you don't need a lot of freezer space or other space. You can put them anywhere in your house. Mine are down on some shelves in the basement. Now with this too, I'm gonna just be pulling up stuff that's from my uh, basement shelves. And Joe, if people have questions or comments, cause these are not gonna be what everybody has or is getting a lot of you may have a question you may have a suggestion that we have not thought of in putting this together this is entirely unrehearsed and please uh, would they put it in the chat box is it where it would be yes go ahead and put your questions in the chat box i'm monitoring that and i'll read them off as we go so what's in your pantry alice <laughs> So, okay, well, I'm going to start. You ask about the fruits and vegetables part. And I, what I've got lined up in front of me are a whole bunch of stuff I brought up for the pantry. So I'm going to be bringing up, talking a little bit about them. Then I'm going to put them back in the box and take them down, or have my husband take them down to the cellar. And um, again, you ask the fruits and vegetables. We know 
the, there are still fruits and vegetables that are out there, but it is kind of a sense of relief to have some in their home that you can go to. If, you know, some, some of us may have to spend 14 days quarantined, quarantined in our home. If, if we, you know, cross paths with somebody that, that got tested for positive, or, you know, maybe we are just don't feel well ourselves. Just to, something not even related to what we're all worried about. It's such a sense of comfort to have some food there that you could, can draw upon. And with those canned foods, and, you know, here's my little, uh, my little uh, teleprompters here. <laughs> I have the little notes I put on these, so I'd be kind of organized. We could all, you know, make the best use of our time here. But you know, you get several canned foods there, and there really isn't a shortage of foods. And I encourage people not to food hoard, but you just get get what you need and then replenish it. And you know, having some of these on hand, we're, the big news we're being told every day is stay home. And with that. If you have some of these on hand, maybe you don't need to go shopping every couple of days for something that you're, you're missing. Or maybe you can spread that time you go shopping out to longer than maybe a week, maybe a week and a half or so. And I don't know, I'm in my 70s. So, you know, you kind of, as the older you get, the less you kind of, they tell you guys, just stay home, <laughs> keep, keep people away. And with this, you know, just various things are out there. You know, you get fruits of all kinds, cans, jars, whatever. And uh, I'm just going to put them back in my little box so here. Have Alice, my husband. Alice, what can we do with fruits other than just eat them as fruits? Is, is there anything creative we can do? Well, you know, with these, um, one of the things, there's, there's really is nothing wrong with them, it's just a fruit. But, you know, one of the things too, we're still getting other foods from the grocery store that, you know, have a good shelf life of a week or more. I think fruits are great mixed in with yogurt. I mean, what, or mixed in with a fresh salad, like, you know, in your refrigerator, apples and your citrus fruits really keep pretty well. You know, they'll last a couple of weeks and still stay high quality. So I like to mix some of those up with maybe some of my canned fruits and Maybe then I even use like a yogurt as a dressing or, you know, what I've used some too is just a little bit of honey. Sometimes just to add a little touch of sweetness onto that. It's just a real simple kind of thing to do. And, and there's no recipe that all required. So there's so, something that you can do with that. And so, so, I know fruit, you so fruit is a snack, but also add it to things like salad. And you're right. I like to do that. And I have done things like fresh strawberries or cutting up apples. Mm -hmm. But you're right. Why couldn't you add pineapple tidbits as you had up there? It could be anything, right? Yeah. You can, I mean, you can roast the, were those pears that you had in the jar? Um, that was peaches oh, that I had peaches. in the jar. But you can actually roast peaches or I've made peachy chicken where I put peaches on top of my chicken and baked in the oh. oven. Yeah, you know, and I think that everybody that's on this call has is on the has access to the internet. You know, start thinking or just searching for recipes that use these. And if they have a fresh fruit, you can often use just a canned fruit. And you know, one of the things too, if you are looking for recipes, that just remember, except for baking, the exact amounts usually aren't that essential as to what you put in a food. It's only, you know, don't leave out the baking powder if you're making pancakes, for example. But, but you know, whether you put a half cup or a, a three-fourths cup of fruit on them doesn't really matter. Now, a couple other things too, just your vegetables. Um, like one of the ones I really like to have are some form of tomato. I have the diced tomatoes in here. Now with those, they're just a great base for you could make a soup last night i was on facebook talking with a lot of people and um, you know people were making them in their slow cooker they're making them in their multi cooker it's a great base it's a very nutritious thing and actually um they may be just as um healthy if not more so sometimes that tomato you've had hanging around on your counter for a long time because canned foods are really processed at the peak of maturity and they that stays actually at peak maturity for a long time. Another thing too with this. And actually, Alice, I'm going I'm to stop you on that one because I think this is something that people really don't realize is that whether you're talking about the tomato or the pineapples, or you're talking about the salmon, the chicken, whatever it is that's canned, oftentimes you're right. The processing plants are right by the fields. And so they've been packaged 
at the peak of its maturity, it, all its vitamins and minerals right in there. But you're right, that organic vegetable that you have in your drawer that's like looking a little shriveled up, yeah, you can still eat it, but it is not going to have the same nutritional value as something that is, you know, at its peak. So really good point for most people to, you know, that they don't think about that. They just think, oh, fresh is better. Fresh has a different texture to it, but it may not be as nutritious as our canned foods. Yeah, and you're less likely to have food waste with something that, uh, that you, it, than some of those fresh fruits and vegetables. Some of them really only taste good for just a couple of days. Now, one of the ones too, and by the way, I'm bringing this up on my little notes I had down here. And if I'm missing something you think's important, just jump, jump in, please. And you know, if, if I don't see you and stop talking, just start waving or something, please. I really mean that because we want to get all these questions in there. And I don't have all the answers on my little, little sticky notes here, okay? But with these, um, you know, they often have somewhere on the can, it says Best Buy, okay? That doesn't mean you toss them out the day after that. That's not a safety issue, it's a quality issue. So, you know, if, if it's been stored in, you know, a, your regular house temperatures and so on, it's not dent, there's a, not a coal in there, it's fine, you know, don't, don't worry about if it's a, a you know, months or a couple months or so after that date. It's still good to eat. By the way, corn is one of the ones I like too, because it is, you know, a lot of recipes call for corn. And you can use frozen corn or you can use canned corn. It's a good substitute in those recipes. You don't have to have the exact ingredient. And um, Speaking of substitutes, a little, well, we'll talk, remind me, we'll talk about that after we talk about some of these foods later. But Joe and I have got so many things we'd like to share with you. But just remember that Best Buy doesn't mean it's bad after that date. And there is a website. Somebody that, asked me, is it still good a year later? Um, you know, probably. I can't, you know, it's like, I really can't say Definitely, you know, that's one of those things too. You can go on the company's website and ask them that question. And, you know, the thing is many people, because the, the quality may go down, you know, it may taste a little bit old. The smell may not be as good or something like that. So I can't really give you an exact date. I wish I could. It depends too on how you stored it. If you had it in your hot camper all summer, I don't know what the taste is going to be like of it. If, you know, maybe just it tastes so yucky you get sick from it. Or, you know, if it was stored in a cabin or something where it got frozen, maybe there's a little crack in the, the can where something got in from that. So I can't say exactly, but I say don't, don't toss it the day after. And, you know, if you're storing canned food, I kind of like where I have them down on my shelves. I have like the one with the earliest date first, then behind that, the other ones kind of like they do at the grocery store to kind of the rotate the first in, first out. Boy, these two good. You make a chowder with those. Like for example, um, you know, just with your milk. And in fact, we'll, I'll bring up my milk now. <laughs> I, I could also believe that powdered milk was flying off the shelves that um, I had, I thought, well, you know, maybe it would not be bad to have some powdered milk in the house, just, just in case, because I think it's a really good, nutritious food. But this is, this is the only side of the bag that was left in the whole store. And I bet you people have no idea of what they're going to do with it. Um, I haven't had powdered milk since I was a poor, starving graduate student. Now, Joe, we were talking earlier. You had a great story about how you use, still use powdered milk on the road, but I think it's still really good today. Well, actually, when I'm out speaking, I fill baggies with one third cup of oats. I use the quick oats because the old fashioned ones, because I'm not cooking them, don't, you know, get soft enough. So one cup of quick, I mean, excuse me, one third cup of quick oats, one third cup of nonfat dry milk powder, a sprinkle of raisins, I zip it up and I travel with it along with a cup and a little heating wand that goes in the cup to heat it up. Now, of course, you can heat the water in the microwave. You can go <laughs> someplace and say, hey, can I have a cup of water? Um, but to have that little plug-in thing, you can find it in any of the travel stores. 
just makes it a lot easier. There've been times where I'm in an airport and I'm plugging it in because my flight is late and I just need something quick to eat and it's 11 o'clock at night and everything is closed down. So I call that my oatmeal in a bag. And so mm -hmm. for that reason, the, the non-fat dry milk powder is helpful. And like, I, like Alice was talking about, whenever you think you can use milk, so maybe you say, I don't want to drink it reconstituted. Yeah. Because you know it, unless it's really, really cold, you're right. It tastes a little bit different. But you can make a smoothie out of it. You can make, you know, add it to your oatmeal or any kind of hot thing if you're making some kind of like macaroni and cheese where you have to add milk to it if you're making your macaroni and cheese with milk I you know I guess the packages no they still call for milk don't they the packages I think I think so yeah. yeah so you can reconstitute it for that so think about having some non-fat milk powder I think that's a great idea well and you know I think putting a little dab of chocolate into it is that not too bad, bad of a thing to do? It kind of a, perks up the flavor a bit. And, you know, what I find sometimes when I want a treat is actually I just take a glass of cold milk and it could be cold reconstituted powdered milk. I put a little bit of chocolate into it and that's almost my, my dessert. That's my treat for the day. So it's something you could do. And I'll, uh, you mentioned oatmeal. So I will get the oatmeal down and <laughs> I'll put that back, be taken back to the cellar. But this is a great thing to have on hand because you can use that milk in it, which also increases the nutritional quality of it. And maybe, you know, again, that powder milk, because maybe you want to save your regular drinking milk for drinking. And so you use your powder milk for cooking purposes. Also, a lot of baking recipes call oatmeal, whether it's a top for a crisp, maybe it's for making meatballs or something. So it's a good food just to have on hand, an easy one to add the stuff. And, you know, there are a lot of, oh, and I'm, again, I'm not publishing any company, but there are a lot of companies that have their, that do sell oatmeal. You just go to their website and get ideas for recipes from them. Oh, I had one Thanks, more. Thanks, Alice. Um, and Dawn uh, put in the chat box that she uses powdered milk for all of her baking. And I think that's a wise idea. So, um, and, and like in her oatmeal, she said oatmeal in my waffle recipe. There you go. Oh, that would be great. You It'll know, be... I do something weird. You know how like some people add chia seeds to their yogurt just to give mm -hmm. it a little bit of texture to it? I add, again, it's quick oats because I'm not cooking it. Mm -hmm. Quick oats to my, um, to my yogurt. So. Oh, that does sound good. And something else, because, you know, all those breakfast bars and power bars or whatever are really expensive if you've got a large family mm -hmm. and, and everybody's taking a bar that costs a dollar fifty each or even more. Uh, you might even make cookies for everybody. And what I do is I use the, and it's probably on the top of your oatmeal box right now. Look at the top of your oatmeal box, Alice. There's an oatmeal um, raisin cookie recipe, I think on the top. You tell me, is it there? No, flip open the top on the back side of the top. Oh, man, I haven't opened this yet. You mean I have to open my- Oh, no, ne then never mind, never mind, I forgot. Okay, on okay, the top of this is, is a recipe for an oatmeal raisin cookie, and I do it, but with a couple of substitutions. I cut the sugar in half, or sometimes even less, depending on the recipe. Usually I start with half and see how that tastes, and then maybe I can cut it a little bit more on the next batch. When it calls for butter, for example, that one says one stick of butter plus another, I think it was six tablespoons or something like that of butter, which is a lot of butter. Um, you can use an oil. I use canola oil and just use about three quarters of what you would use. So if it says eight tablespoons of butter, use six tablespoons of oil. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's really too oily, too wet. Yeah. Um, so you just make those two little... Uh, uh, substitutions. I always add walnuts in, crushed up walnuts, just because I love to have almonds. <laughs> so, um, uh, oh, and, and Dawn was talking about her oatmeal and the waffle recipe came from Jane Brody. I used to have that big fat book. Okay, and okay. It uses canned pumpkin. So that would be something good for us to have as canned pumpkin, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, sure. It'd give you a good vitamin A, a good, you know, just a lot of thoughts out there. Maybe one thing, I'll just mention this right now too, and I had a few things marked on it, and then you're going to post this on the website. And uh, this is kind of like the internet, a word pops up and I'm like, oh, I could talk about that. But 
you're going to be posting something on ingredient substitutions when you post the picture. And this is something that just I put together several years ago when I was working with the extension, checked it over, and it speaks to a lot of those things you talked about. I'm not going to tell, give the examples. I'll just mention some of the foods that are on it. People can go to later on. You'll have that post along the video. They can get that. But like, you know, things like um, baking powder what you do if you're baking and you don't have that, what might be a, a substitute for it. But um, also there is no substitute for baking soda, okay? Uh, with that, some things about butter, what you can substitute and what you can't. Like you mentioned with the oil, you had to cut the amounts down on that a bit. And because you can't just, unless a recipe calls for melted butter, in which you can just substitute oil for it, you know, equal amounts, it really doesn't work. Also, sometimes- Well, that, that's why I was saying if you use- yeah, exactly. Camilla found out using about three quarters of that amount. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's going to come up with the same kind of texture. Secondly, it's fewer calories. There you go. <laughs> I, I will say, when you say fewer calories, it makes you think about, you know, some of those margarines that are reducing calories because they have water, um, they don't necessarily work in baking unless you've changed them some, or you've made some different, you know, ways of, of, um, uh, find a recipe for them because they just don't have that same amount of fat in them. They don't work the same. And I would get, when I worked with extension, so many calls, how come my cookies are just so flat? I was trying to make them lower in calories. I use these margarines. Well, these reduced calorie ones, instead of the nice fluffy, big cookies, they just were flat. They were greasy. So those are just the kind of things that are on this. It's three pages of things. Um, so just do check the website. It will be up there that you can download. That will be so, available uh, afterwards. Alice, I'm going to be putting it on the same page that you all registered on. Remember, it has a yellow background mm -hmm. like this. Uh, if you scroll down, you'll see the recordings of all the programs that I've done. Well, except for one, I'm still, Zoom is kind of backlogged on the, giving me the recordings. But down there at the bottom, there's some resources. One is a video on how to wash your hands properly, oh, excellent. which I know sounds like so basic, like don't, I mean, I'm not that dumb Joe, but you know what? I watched the video, it was made from an uh, RN, as in registered nurse, and- I see, it's good. I, I wasn't Thank you doing for it doing right. that. So I'm teaching my granddaughter that now too, about cleaning the backs of your hands, in between, getting your fingernails. It's a really good video. So I'll put down the substitution, the substitution list in that same spot and hopefully we can spread it on social media as well okay and you know with this um i asked joe are we exactly off the air at 20 after because we were 20 minute broadcast and she said we can keep going so if you need to leave don't feel bad about that we're not going to call your name out or anything but um you know we are gonna i guess go on for a while more and I can't tell exactly how long that'll is and we until Joe pulls a plug. I'm wondering Joe, I have several things sitting here. Should I rush through those real quick and then we can jump in with some comments? I, I want to hear about beans because I'll tell you um, sometimes the meat aisle was completely empty. Uh, my husband came back and said there was nothing but pork left. It, not that we mind pork but it's like that was the only thing that was there in the in the fresh meat. So how do we get some protein if the fresh meat is low. Okay, beans to the rescue. And you know, with beans, you can get them canned or you can get them dried. And the dried are a bit cheaper, but these are also shelf staple. Uh, with it, a couple of comments on beans. Um, one, they're very easy to use and you don't have to just have a bowl of beans that you can put them, dump them on top of a salad, like a Southwestern salad, bean recipes on the internet. With those, you can substitute most beans for other beans. You know, they, they really are kind of comparable in, in, in uh, how they work in the amounts in recipes. Um, if you have a little problem with beans. Wait a minute, Alice. Is that the beans, beans, a magical fruit? The more you eat, the more you toot? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, you know, with this, um, you know, there are products that will help with gas problems after the fact. But yet, the one that I know that's most common to help prevent that's on the market is something called Beano. 
And this here we go. Is, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's Beano. Yeah, yeah, if you can see it. He's got a little bottle of it. It's a little bottle. It works. And with this, you take this before you eat something. You don't mix it with the food. You just take it before you eat something. And, you know, beans and my husband don't get along that well. But I said, we're having beans some nights, honey. <laughs> and so I, when I bought my beans, I also bought my Beano. And with that, though, a couple of things is that you can help if you're not used to beans, that you can also help reduce some problems with them. If it's canned beans, just make, you know, rinse them. It helps remove some of the substances that causes gas. If you're cooking from scratch, um, remove or uh, toss out the soaking water and rinse them with fresh water. Also, uh, start slow. Like, I mean, I love beans. I could eat this whole can, but if my husband did, <laughs> it would be social isolation, I think. <laughs> so, you know, start slow. Maybe just have a half cup, and a half cup is equal in protein more to about the, the protein is about a, a, an ounce of meat. And so just start with a half cup, you know, as you're including, this has a lot of fiber in it, which is good for us at this time. And, um, but increase your, maybe your water intake a bit. Maybe you should be, be getting more fiber. And um, also, if you know, if you're having to watch sodium a bit with beans, they've done some research that said, I don't know which one, if it, that about if you rinse them, you remove about 40% of the sodium content. So it's just a really great thing. You know, one of the things you can just mix a bunch of beans together and throw some salad dressing on them. And then you have a mixed bean dish. Um, hey, Alice, are you familiar with, and I'm sure you are, Texas caviar? I've heard of it. I've never made okay. it. Well, I actually, I lived in, in Texas for 20 years. I'm not sure if that's why I know about it. But it's, it's a popular dish within my family. So when we get together, they'll say, hey, can you make the Texas caviar? I, and look it up. You can, you know, look it up anywhere. It's kind of like, um, let's see, I like a can of black beans, a can of corn, a can of what a can of tomatoes chopped. There's all these cans of, and then you might add some fresh onions to that and maybe some fresh bell pepper. I like to add a little jalapeno to it and some cilantro and put it with a vinegar salad dressing. Oh, mix. that's delicious. I go with the good seasons, a little package because it's just simple. And it's easy to make, and it's one of those ways that lots of kids will eat beans oh, that yeah. way. Yeah. yeah, And you can, you know, dip it with the uh, chips or just eat it mm -hmm. by the spoonful. Well, that's what you can, you know, you can use like, be, there are a lot of bean dips out there. There's kind of another way. And by the way, you mentioned chips, and I saw a question come up that, you know, I think another shelf stable handy thing are some of the chips that are out there. You know, you can look for ones that are, you know, maybe somewhat lower in fat, maybe a little lower in, in salt, but they're just really handy, shelf stable. Every way that you can, you know, use them as kind of a side to a meal, like a salad dish or something like that. Or you could use them for those dips. And you know, really, I think beans with maybe a piece of fruit, a bean dip and chips, why is not And maybe you mix some cheese or throw some uh, uh, shredded cheese over that. That's a meal, right? That's got all the basic components. <laughs> It so, is. you know, think, think creative. It doesn't have to be cooked to be a meal. That would be just fine. And you may find some creative things. Like, I don't know, my husband found some um, uh, sweet potato crackers that he really likes. And, and again, I'm not pushing these, but I mean, you may find some new foods out there. And, and actually, this may change your way of eating to the, for the better. You know, that's I, a good thing to pick up. You're absolutely right, because we're now being forced to eat other things because what we wanted wasn't there. Maybe we're going to be exposed to some new foods. That's a great idea. Um, we know. Oh, I was just going to say, and then I saw somebody had a question to come in. If we're, somebody was mentioning that yesterday they used chips and they put hamburger over them. They uh, sprinkled it with cheese. They, uh, what well, was grilled, it was already brown cooked hamburgers, sprinkled with cheese, stuck it in the oven and, you know, probably 350 till the cheese melted. They had a sheet pan meal, you know? Again, there you've you got go. basic components, dairy, meat, bread. You can, <laughs> you can add a fruit to that. I, I mean, and it was so simple. No recipe required. But you had a now, question, question, Kim? Yeah, you're getting creative. Um, we also had somebody on the chat list said that she uses beans. She purees them and adds them to meatloaf. Yeah, to kind of oh, cut what back What a great on, idea. Yeah, and also 
she mentions that she uses it to um, thicken up soup. And, and uh, oh, I think excellent. she's talking about pureed. Oftentimes when I'm making soup, I always take some of that, put it in the blender and puree it because then it's not broth based. It's like creamy and it tastes a lot richer, even though it's still the same thing. But you could do the same thing. So, I don't know if you've ever put hot soup in a blender. It gets really hot and can blow the top off. Oh, yeah. You need about to fill about the blender about half yeah. full and yeah. maybe even hold, put a- And hold it down, right. Hold it down. But, but Dawn has the right idea. If you puree beans and then add it to it so you don't have to worry about the heat, I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, she also mentioned that she would- put Texas caviar over pasta. Oh, excellent idea. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, That's can I say I... a little word about pasta when I heard the magic word there? Hi, Simone. Simone, you know, Simone Demers Collins. Oh yes. yeah, sure, yeah, hi. She said Simone. she uses white beans in her smoothies. <gasps> I've never tried that. Rather than protein powder. I mean, protein powder is so outrageously expensive. White beans, Simone, I have to say, I have never tried that. And you're right. I, every single time I think about getting some protein powder, I think, oh, it costs so much. Good idea. Oh, yeah. And, and the white beans would have a very mild flavor. And that would be like a, a proper, what, a great northern or a cannellini yes. or beans, one of those types of beans. Mm -hmm. that, okay. oh, one, of my, one of my canned foods I didn't get in, but salsa is a great stable to have. I mean, your salsa, you can do that with your, those, those uh, tacos uh, or those ch uh, chips that I mentioned with that, you know, sprinkle some of this then on when you, you take it out of the oven. Also, it's a good flavor additive. If you're making soup, just put a little bit of this in there. Uh, you can mix salsa half and half with yogurt and have a great dip. It's something different or, or put it on. Another thing that I have with the salsa is potatoes. Yes. Potatoes are very good in storage and the sweet potato and the white potato. And with these, you know, you're supposed to keep in kind of a cool, dry, darker place. So I am down in the cellar in a room where the lights off and I just have them in and they need ventilation. So I kind of have them in a cloth bag I happen to have and I just leave it open or, you know, you could have them like you maybe get the bag in the grocery store with the little holes in it and you know, that gives that ventilation or you poke some, a lot of holes into a bag that you have to store them in. But these are also great to have that you can combine with these foods. Like, uh, you know, put some beans on top of the potatoes along with maybe some salsa and, uh, you know, you, you're, you're good to go with stuff. And, and I'm sure, you know, they're, it's just, they're, hey, you're Alice, only limited by your imagination. <laughs> Alice, do you remember, um, it's not as popular now, but you just kind of brought back some memories. I would say it was back in the 90s, those stores that were baked, baked potato stores. In other words, like a fast food restaurant, you get a baked potato and you say, give me some butter, give me some Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. Beans. Right? So it was very popular there for a while. I don't see them so much anymore, but you're right. We can do a big stuffed baked potato, add everything but the kitchen sink, kind of like my salad today. You saw my salad. I was oh, yeah. It looked food. delish. Yeah. Well, you know, too, with, um, I do keep in my refrigerator, I do keep like uh, yogurt. And with that, that is like, you know, you don't need a sour cream either. You can put that over a baked potato and, and taste well, it. Well, as like long as it's not strawberry yogurt, that doesn't <laughs> taste good on potatoes. But you're right, the plain, plain yogurt. Okay, um, let's see what else. Okay. Talk about the beans. Uh, you know, I think the canned meat is good to have on hand. I haven't talked about that yes. yet. And you know, there's just all kinds, salmon and tuna and chicken are real common. And with that, I do like to keep- um, What do you do with all those canned meats? Well, you know, I don't think you need to do anything real special, <laughs> really. I just always, I just have them on sandwiches, but I, you, could, you could make them into like casseroles, just find a casserole dish and add some meat to that. You could put them into a probably a soup or something. I just tend to have the sandwiches a lot. It's just a real simple kind of thing to do. But you I know, you can- with a little bit of mayonnaise and spread it on a sandwich? Yeah, yeah that's, oh, a, that's, mayo. That, that's another thing that I do have in, in storage, just to make sure I don't run out of this because it really does add a lot of flavor. 
if you've got some oat mustard uh, around, you can also put a dab in there that may heighten the flavor up a bit. Um, that's How about tuna noodle casserole and salmon patties? Yeah, there you go. One of mom's favorites. And you're right, I haven't had that in a long time. Oh. Maybe it's time. So salmon patties would just be what salmon and egg and a little breadcrumb, kind of like you would make a meatloaf. Is that how you do it, Dawn? Yeah, I think that would probably work, you know. And, you know, the, the pasta is another thing to have on hand. And, you know, again, you don't want to over make something. And just a, this is a very rough guideline, but I kind of worked it out with my. Um... I, hey, Alice, just for a second, Dawn oh, says yes. That, that's the recipe for salmon patty, and it's right there on the can. So, oh, yeah, we don't right. really have to go very far. Okay. Well, you know, just keep those comments and questions coming in because there are so many ways to make things work, and we don't even pretend to have all the different ideas. We're just kind of hopefully offering you a little bit of a starter conversation on this. Um, you know, with the pasta, as a kind of a rule of thumb, about a half cup of like a the pasta is in little pieces, about a half cup will cook up to about a cup. So, you know, if you find yourself still throwing away pasta, maybe you just have about the half cup per person. Or like for me, I have a half cup of the dry pasta and then for my husband, maybe a cup and a half of that. John, did you hear that? A half a cup makes a cup. Yeah. <laughs> we need to let him know because you're right. He, he'll make the whole box because it doesn't look like much when it's dried. Mm -hmm. And then you have all this pasta in the refrigerator. And something you don't want to do now is waste food. Exactly. It's something we used to do. Well, all of us got caught up in that, right? And we were like, oh, yeah, oh we'll yeah. just go to the store and get some new, you know, pasta isn't very expensive. No big deal. Well, you know what? But still, there could be some shortages out there, so don't waste any food. That's oh, great. Yeah. And, and you know, the thing is, if you waste the pasta, you waste all the other foods that went into that pasta. So it's not just one food you're wasting. It's usually a salad or, or something else that, that goes into that. Now, if you're having like the spaghetti or the long, thin ones, about if you do like a half inch diameter of that or about the size of a nickel, those long, that one will cook up in, again into about a, a half a cup. So just to give you some guidelines so you don't waste it and, you, you know, you don't feel like, oh, I'm just stuffing on this because, oh, I shouldn't wait. You know, you just get enough to eat. Good idea. Good idea. Now, I just think of anything else. Oh, you know, se seasonings are kind of handy to have on hand. Like I've got onion powder and garlic powder just to add a little bit of flavor to something without having to, if you don't have the, the fresh ones handy. Uh, and we mentioned and, and, fruit. Can I add something to that? Because... If you Please, read yeah. from on the McCormick website, McCormick is a, a manufacturer of, wet, of spices and herbs. If you read on there, they tell you you should change out your spices every year. Um, I will let you know that I have <laughs> probably things going back 10 or even 20 years ago. Now, are they as potent? Are they as flavorful? No, but I will still keep on using them until the whole bottle is empty. I just might have to use twice as much. Is that true, Alice? Am I, am I doing okay with that? <laughs> you know, I mean, if they still have a, a flavor, you know, a couple of things they say, if you still have the tin cans, the spices, they're probably too old. I think those went out, I'm not, I don't know, 20 years ago or something. But, you know, one of the things that the spice gets older too, one of the things you can do to potentiate its flavor and even a newer spice, crush it. You know, if you've got a mortar and pestle, crush it in there to release some of the flavor or just put it on a plate and, you know, take the back of a tablespoon or something, kind of crush it. In fact, you'll even find a lot of recipes refer to crushed spice. You know, you, you don't buy spices called crushed spice. You buy like leaves of, of thyme or something, but they refer to crush just to release that flavor. Oh, I do want to forget either. And this goes back to those cereals. And by the way, cereals are good too to have on hand. Um, and Alice, by the way, Dawn wanted you to know that she is also an extension agent in Pearl River County, uh, Mississippi. Okay. So well, hey, Dawn, by the way, you can see what um, Joe and I are doing today. And hopefully it's not a 
complete train wreck, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> or, or like you're, you're, you're waiting for a train wreck to happen. But I, I think you can see how easy it is to do something via Zoom. And I know that the extension nationwide is doing more Zoom programs. So, you know, feel free to take this idea that, that Joe had for today and put on something like this in your own, own place. You know, you just sit at home and you just Go find things in your cellar. And John, also, if you've got any resources that you would like to share with oh, yeah. the rest of the group, please send it to me. And I'd be happy to share it on the website and on social media. Get the word out because I think all of us are kind of struggling with this new normal. Oh, dried fruit. These yes. Are these are all so good. I've, uh, here I just happen to have, and I've got others in my, but the mango, which is the kind of a yellow fruit, adds those nutrients and vitamin A in that. Some blueberries. And, you know, these are good. I toss them on salads. You can take those dry cereals you have and mix them up with that and mix them up with another food like nuts and make your own trail mix. Maybe you have your kids make their own trail mix of what they would like from these so they each have their own individualized one they're, they're eating from. But they're, they're just a great flavor hit for a lot of foods. I use them in cereal, I use them in salads, I use them in trail mix. And when we talk about the nuts too, I also have a couple different kinds of nut butter. So, you know, these are really handy. Again, you can spread them on crackers. Like I, that's another thing, I just have some crackers on hand that you know there's not always could maybe fresh bread around i just have some of these crackers there and, and you just spread that on these if you don't have bread handy and a very easy thing to do or you know spread them on if you have apple apple slices put them on uh, celery just a lot of things or just eat it off the spoon oh just just don't dip back in there though. <laughs> oh, okay don't do that yes <laughs> don't do that oh i don't i don't want to forget i had here oh, a couple of things i didn't want to forget to mention that, you know, just make sure you have enough coffee on hand. <laughs> There's something so nice and soothing about that morning cup of coffee. So if you're running kind of low, the next time you might pick up some, so you have that always in the morning. And, you, and know, you know what, that would be a good time for some of us to get ourselves a coffee grinder because the beans last longer than the ground up coffee. Mm -hmm. So maybe you have an extra stash of that. And when you run low, you can just grind up a little bit. So good idea. Yeah. And for other people like me, I'm not a coffee drinker, but <laughs> tea bags last like forever. I don't know. I'm sure it's not forever, but I have plenty of tea bags and I also have my Diet Coke as some there of you. There you go. Have, <laughs> I know that Diet Coke. Coffee. That's one of your things. Yeah. Well, you know, another thing I like to recommend to people is have some kind of a treat on hands. You know, you, you kind of want to have a little bit of something other than just beans and canned veggies and things. Now, I don't know, for my husband and me, and this is not going to be everybody's treat, but we really like dark chocolate. We'll have a couple squares after meal, but maybe your treat is having like, um, oh, maybe it's like a certain kind of cookie. Maybe it's, what you know, somebody, what are your treats? Please uh, type some into the chat box if you'd have some that you'd really recommend, because I think it's kind of nice to have a little bit of something for a snack or the end of a meal, just so that, you know, you feel that you're... Uh, Something special is happening there. Alice, I sent, I sent John to the grocery store the other day, only because he's the shopper. I told you I'm not a big fan of shopping. Uh, I sent him to Walmart the other day and said, make sure you have enough Dove chocolates and my Diet Coke. And that's where I usually get them. So for me, it's the Dove chocolate. For other people, it's a certain kinds of cookies or ice cream. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're a little bit more perishable. So, you know, what can you have instead that will still feel of comfort because yeah uh friday we were talking about soothers you know and i brought up i don't know if you were on the call i brought up my little uh shell you know just it's just so oh, yeah, yeah. Like, like a squeegee ball or a blanket it just feels like uh, helps me to relax <laughs> and I'm all wound up and um so food can do the same thing and we don't, this is not the time where we want to get into binge eating, but if you, like Alice said, just give yourself permission to have that one thing, sit in quiet, not while you're doing 101 things, sit in quiet <laughs> and actually enjoy it. Give yourself permission to enjoy, mine is like I said, the Dove chocolates. Okay, I feel that, I think I've cleared off, oh, I, I just had, 
rice here. It's always good to have on hand. And you can sub through different kinds, different recipes. You just may have to cook them differently. And, and also, uh, in addition to rice, I have, I have rice. I have quinoa. I have um, couscous, the pearl couscous I really like. And um, oh, couscous cook up so fast. Well, that, that's why I don't use the small little ones. I use the pearl ones, like the little round beads. Oh, the ones Have that... Have you seen them? Um, I'm trying to think oh, like, is it the Israeli couscous or the... Well, What's anyway, the, the little pearl ones. The pearl ones. So they're the size of like BBs. And yeah, so okay, I know what you're eight. talking about. They're yeah. Still, but they, and they cook up relatively quickly, but couscous, the kind that little little minute ones, they cook up in a minute or two. The pearl ones, I think, take like 10 minutes, but I can't remember. I, I'm not, like I said, I'm not real good about it. Follow the recipe and I do well with that. Also, um, don't forget some of those convenient uh, rice or similar kind of bags. So for example, I don't know what brand it is. I get it at Sam's, but it's brown rice and quinoa. Mm. It, you know, crack open the top of the, of the bag, put it in the microwave for 90 seconds and voila, you've got a oh. prepared starch. I, I have uh, a couple of boxes of those on my shelf at all times. That's kind of a given. And popcorn. They don't even have to be Excellent a idea. I like Excellent a treat. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So popcorn is a great snack. Just I put it in a pan, put some oil at the bottom and some popcorn, just one layer of popcorn. Don't go crazy because it pops up big. One layer of popcorn, uh, enough oil to cover those kernels. And mm -hmm. I put it on a medium heat. For me, it's a six on my stove. Put the top on. I don't disturb it. I might shake it a little <laughs> bit every one then. And it is delicious. Way better than even microwave popcorn for those of you who like the microwave popcorn. Well, that's what I'm finding really more people are discovering creative things that, that they can do. That's a really kind of exciting thing to, to try. And, and again, it's something that's sh shelf stable for quite a while. Yes. Because oh, one time I bought popcorn in a bag. I don't know how big it was. <laughs> But it stood up about as tall as I am because it was a specific black kernel popcorn. Have any of you tried black kernel popcorn? It's a I don't white, think I have. It's a white popcorn. It, well, it's a black kernel, but when it pops up, it pops up like a brilliant white rather than if you go with regular popcorn, it'll say yellow popcorn. So this is a white popcorn and they're tiny little popcorns. Mm -hmm. And I loved it so much that for a while I was ordering in bags, like I said, that were as tall as me. What would that be? I don't know, 25 pounds? I, oh, and I would put them in little bags, and so they lasted for forever. So I, I think it's great, Alice, that you brought up all these ideas and also invited us to be creative. Just because there's a recipe out there that says you must have these ingredients doesn't mean you have to follow them. Not at all. Unless you're going with a cake, um, like I said, you can be pretty flexible with some of the cookies, but I wouldn't, you know, change the baking soda, like you said, or, or the eggs or the oil. Well, I know I had a friend who was like, bag. just left something out. She said, oh, it's such a small little bit of soda. Oh, surely I don't need that. And yeah, she did. Yes, you oh, did. Can I just ask one, one thing before I forget that there is a website that is often mentioned as far as if you want to know how long food last and it's just called still tasty just the word still tasty all together without a space.com it has it's um it gets its sources from um uh, government sources from um from industry sources on just about how long food lasts so it's also kind of a good thing to give you some general guidelines now if the guideline doesn't quite seem right to you i would suggest looking on the website of the uh manufacturer or something to, to check further on that fabulous fabulous okay i'm going to close the call now i've got to run but uh hopefully you got some great ideas i'll be posting the video again online and then i'll have the resources on that same page and i'll try to get an email out in the next day or two with these resources as well so thank you all for coming until tomorrow. Bye-bye. Hey, thank you. Bye, I'll check Alice. what you do tomorrow.